Hey creator, welcome back to the Mindful Creators and welcome if you're new here. I'm Fem, I make knitting and crochet related videos on this channel and I talk about mental health, mental well-being. Today I have 13 tips for beginner knitters from a beginner knitter. I started knitting around the summer, just at the beginning of the summer and uh, I'm still quite a beginner knitter therefore. And I thought it would be fun to share some tips that I learned along the way and I think uh, could be really helpful for you if you're just starting out with knitting. We also have a, a rare bit of sunlight in here. I think it will be gone in a few minutes. So if, if the sunlight and the lighting is changing a little bit, you know why. There are many different knitting styles. The most common ones are continental knitting and English knitting. You probably already have seen them, but there are many, many other forms. Uh, you can find out now what works best for you. Personally, I'm a continental knitter. I already hold my yarn in my left hand because of uh, crocheting. I started crocheting before I started knitting. And therefore, I really like the continental way. English style, this the throwing style. I can do it a little bit, but I'm not very good at it. And it's not my preferred style. Just know that you can choose what you like the best, what works best for you. And some say that the continental style of knitting is faster. However, I think the fastest knitter on the world is a English style knitter. So that honestly does not matter. Just find out what works for you. If you have crocheted before you started knitting, there's a tip that I really want you to get because I made this mistake and I only realized it a few months after I started knitting. So with crochet, you wrap your yarn a certain way around your hook. I thought with knitting that you wrap your yarn the same way around your needles, but that is where you make the mistake. I've seen multiple crocheters make this mistake. I actually became aware of this mistake because I wasn't doing the test knit for Oops and Loops. And in that group, a few other crochets too, who just started out with knitting, realized they also made this mistake. What happens if you do this is that all your stitches get twisted. So you get a very tight knitted piece. You will, it will be very hard to meet gauge. That's something to keep in mind. Um, and it's just not the way that the normal patterns are knitted. However, you do use this type of knitting sometimes. Uh, for example, with a twisted rib. So you have the normal ribbing pattern, for example, on the bottom of a sweater or the top of a collar or on the sleeves or a hat. Um, normally you also you do the, the normal way of, of knitting, but it also is possible to do a twisted rib. So that makes it easier for you maybe if you're already used to that way of knitting. But know that that is not the way that you normally knit. And if you knit that way, your fabric won't look the same as is intended in the pattern and it won't fit the same. So keep that one in mind. One of the tips that is very valuable if you are just starting out is just to recognize if you're on the wrong side of your work or on the right side of your work. I really was struggling with this very much in the beginning. I was like, okay, I don't understand how does, how, how does this work? The wrong side of your work. Oh, this depends, of course, on what kind of stitch you're working. If you're just working the basic stockinette stitch, I can explain this. So as you can see here, we have a little swatch. Um, I'm going to show you what is the right side and the wrong side of this work. This is a stockinette stitch, which means you work one row knit and one row purl. I'll explain a little later how the stitches look. But as you can see here with stockinette, this is the side you want to have in front. So the knit stitch. The knit stitch are the little V's that you see here. And the purl side, let me turn the work around. It's not that neat here, but... <laughs> They are little bumps, as you can see. This is the wrong side of your work in stockinette stitch. If you know this basic stitch, this will help you a lot with other stitches that you can try in the future. Okay, the other one that I'm going to show you is maybe a little bit controversial and not everyone wants to do this, but I really recommend you, if you just start out with knitting, to make a gauge swatch every time you make a pattern. And I'm gonna tell you why. A gauge swatch is a little piece of fabric that you make with a stitch that is intended for the pattern. It most of the times is 10 by 10 stitches or four by four inches. Uh, you just make this to make sure that you are using the right needle size, your yarn is right for the pattern and that your gauge, so how tightly or how loosely you're knitting is correct for this pattern. I mostly recommend gauge watching for um, garments. So for a scarf, it isn't that bad if it turns out a little bit bigger, or a little bit smaller. Depends on what you like, of course. But if you're making a sweater, a vest, um, a cardigan, anything that you wear in your body, and where you choose a size, it is really nice if the size also 
turns out to be the size that you wanted it to be. So make a gauge swatch uh, and that will make it way easier for you when you're making the pattern. If you just start out with knitting, one of the questions that will come up is what kind of needles do I need to get? I will tell you a little bit about the three different kinds of needles that you can get and what I recommend. So for needles, you can get straight needles, double pointed needles and circular needles. With straight needles, you can only work back and forth. With double pointed needles, you can make things in the round on a smaller circumference. However, you can also do this with uh, circular needles. I will tell you a little bit about it later. And with circular needles, you can work in the round, you can work flat, you can do most things with it. And that is why I also would recommend it for you. When I just started out and I saw circular needles, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. And I felt a bit intimidated by it. However, it is really the best choice. There are two different types of circular needles. You can get interchangeable ones. Uh, they have a screw kind of attachment piece and a ca cable that are loose from each other. You most of the times buy these in sets, which also means that you buy a full set and that you are completely done for different kinds of patterns that you want to make. You can also buy fixed circular needles. Those are not detachable and just have one needle size, one cable attached to each other. You might want to start with just a very cheap fixed circular needle just to find out if you like it, if you really think knitting is something that you want to do more and if you are confident enough that this is something that you want to work on more, you can buy an interchangeable needle set. The reason why I say this is because those sets are most of the times a little bit more expensive However, my set was about 30 euros, so 30 euros, dollars, almost the same at the moment. Uh, it's very affordable and just a fine beginner set. But these sets can go up to about 100 or 150 euros, dollars, so keep that in mind. I really like using metal needles, but you can also get wooden needles. Most people recommend it for beginning needles because it has a bit more a grip on the, on the yarn that you're using. But I found that I was knitting quite tightly. And it was uh, too much friction, so I really like the metal needles. But you can find out what you like best. It really depends on the person. Okay, when you are starting with the pattern, you first read the gauge, what kind of yarn, and what kind of needles you need. Most times for sleeves, for a cardigan, sweater, something else, they say you'd have to use double pointed needles. However, you don't really have to. You can work on a smaller circumference with your circular needles using the magic loop method. This way of working really works well for sleeves. I'm not the best at explaining how this works, so I will link some videos below. You can see here how it works. It is really easy, really nice. Uh, however, you have to be a bit more careful with making ladders. So I like to interchange uh, where I make the split but it is a really nice way of just making sleeves with the needles that you already have in the house. Okay, we're at the point you're working on something, you are going nicely and you have to put it aside for a little bit. Then I really recommend to use some needle stoppers. Needle stoppers are just literally what they say they are. They stop your needle or they stop your stitches from sliding off your needle. This happened to me once and I now swear by these stoppers. You can buy them in several places however there's also a DIY at home version to try. So you can just use a hair tie. You can grab your needles together, wrap the hair tie around it and now you see your stitches won't come falling off your needle. Okay a little bit more about patterns. One thing to really learn is knitting lingo. There are a lot of knitting abbreviations and they mostly are mentioned in the pattern, so read them before. These here are a lot of different abbreviations that you probably will see once in a pattern. Maybe you're now like, oh, what, what, what does this mean? You will learn it. It is really easy, just as I remember it a little bit. Uh, most of the times, as I said, they are in the pattern, so you can just scroll back, read them again. Okay, what was this again? Okay, I know it again and just work further on the pattern. But it makes it really easy if you learn them a little bit beforehand. If you start a pattern, one really good tip is just to read the whole pattern. I am not always the person who does this, so I'm, I'm a little bit guilty here. But if a pattern says that you have to read it completely, I will. It could be that there is something further in the pattern that you have to be aware of in the beginning because otherwise it won't work as a pattern is intended. Sometimes I'm like, why don't they, don't they just say it in the beginning of the pattern? But this is just something that happens. So really read your pattern before you start. Definitely as a beginning knitter. Now, there are different kinds of stitch markers. I have a few of them. I uh, use multiple of them. 
But there's one thing, one tip that you really have to keep in mind when you're using closed stitch markers. If you're using closed stitch markers in your work, when you're knitting in the round or something, or just knitting in general, you have to slip them. Sometimes it could happen that you, for example, knit them in your work. If you do this, you have to cut it out because you won't be able to get it out anymore. If you're a crocheter first, you know that most of the times you just can get it out, but that is not the case here. So slip your markers. Some different kind of markers that I like to use are these markers. Um, I have these clip-on markers. I have these markers that are open on one side so you can still grab them out of your work if you make a mistake. And I have a few of those closed markers that I like to use on smaller projects. There are many different markers. You can get them at your local yarn store, craft store. You can also make some markers yourself with a little bit of yarn that you have left over. Really cheap, really easy. Always have it around. Just know that there are many different kind of stitch markers. Uh, just find out what works best for you. That is the most important thing. When you are working on something, most of the times you won't have enough yarn in one ball of yarn. And you have to connect another ball of yarn to it. My favorite way to do this is to use a magic knot. This is really simple, really easy. You have to get a hang of it a little bit because in the beginning I was a bit confused. Uh, you see here how I'm doing it. Uh, there are some videos that also explain it really nicely that I will link below. But if you get the hang of it, it is a very, very clean way of making a knot that you won't see later in your work. And a very nice thing of it is that you don't have to weave in ends with this one. So that is my preferred method. And I really recommend it to you. Okay, you've finished your first work. That is amazing. Now you have to bind off. This is something that you can do in many different ways. I at first binded off just with the simple bind off method. I was like, okay, this is enough. This works. However, with just the basic bind off method, you don't get a stretchy hem. I had this problem, as you can see with this sleeve, it is not stretchy at all. So I have to take it out if I want to do this again, because if I attach this to the rest of the cardigan in this case, it will leave a very visible mark. There are many different ways to do stretchy hems. Again, I will link them below, um, but it just really makes sure that it is a really nice stretchy thing. And it also will make your fabric fit better. So for example, if you have a hat, Make sure to use a stretchy bind off because otherwise it will be very tight on your head. The last step for you is to use Ravelry. Uh, it is a platform, online platform for knitters, crocheters. You can find patterns, you can find works that other people made. I really like to use it nowadays. In the beginning, I didn't really use it, but the reason why I wanted to share it is because of the tip that connects to it. My favorite way to use Ravelry is, for example, when I have a pattern in mind and I want to know what kind of yarns I could use. Lots of people use different kinds of yarns and it is really nice to look into those projects and see what kind of yarns I could use. For example, you can search in a specific pattern, then you can go into the projects of the other people and you can type in the search bar the yarn that you maybe already have in mind to use. For example, this pattern that I'm now looking at, I wanted to use Drops Air or Drops for example, I can search it and I can see all the different types of works that people made with Drops Yarn or Drops Air. What I really like about it is to just look at what other people use. Because some patterns really recommend expensive yarn that is not accessible for everyone. So that is really nice that other people already tried something out that I can look at it if it worked for them. And if, uh, see if I could also use it. So for example, I actually use this for a few patterns that I'm working on right now. I am making the Cumulus Blouse by Petit Knit. It is originally made in a kid silk mohair, I think. And I wanted to use something else for my mom because it's a gift knit. She couldn't really handle mohair. And I found that I also could use Drops Burst Alpaca double held. So that is really nice. Also for a sweater that I'm making that I just showed you is the September sweater that is originally made. Also, I don't even know what kind of yarn it's made, but I found out that Drops Air was also the perfect substitute yarn. And at the moment, I'm really loving how it works up because I could already see how other people made it. And well, that rounded up these tips. I really hope this video helped you out a little bit. Uh, like this video if you liked it and follow me here on this channel because you will see way more videos about knitting, crochet, tips, inspiration, or just mental health things, mental well-being. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, creator. Welcome if you're new here. Or at the beginning. Continental Needle?
middle would really re would, would really recommend and you can do it illuminate illuminate what the hell 